He's on child duty. <laughs> get the spanking hand out. <laughs> she said get that spanking hand out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have a good show, eh? All right. Love yous. All right, love you. All right, you're, you're ready to go. You're going. Okay. Thanks, boss train. See you later, mate. What? Yeah. What? See ya. You should see him. <laughs> Mark can't hear anything because I've got the earphone in. Oh, okay. So I'm just relaying everything to him when you guys speak. <laughs> oh, I, I understand that now. Okay. Well, see, you're broadcasting yeah. out loud here, but uh, we're Adam um, said we're going to get um, one of those earphones too. So, yeah, Mark was suggesting that you do that because of something there was like an echo or something now that they're recording it differently. So, yeah, well, Adam's. Well, we're doing it. We've got it happening a little bit differently today. Mark's recording on the iPad instead of the computer. So, oh no, we're Skyping on the iPad and he's recording on the computer. I don't know, but I'm just sort of, I'm looking down at the iPad. So that's why it looks like it's coming up a bit. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I thought it was a little different angle. Yeah. Well, Shabbat yeah. Shalom. Sorry about that. Well, Shabbat Shalom. Yes. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Um, how are you going? Oh, we're doing fine. Um, how are things going over there with you? Yeah, very good. We've had a lot of flooding around our area lately. Um, so, well, not that it affects us very much, but it is a nuisance more than anything. So, but yes, we've it's been some great lessons for the kids about flooding. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow, we we've been having tornadoes around our neighborhood. Oh, wow! Tornadoes to the north of us and tornadoes to the south of us and Yahuwah has put us like in a little bubble. We hardly, we saw the clouds and it was threatening and scary feeling watching the clouds roll. But you know what? We were warned, the Louisville area was warned, oh, don't go out, you know, just watch out. And, and they were giving us a time of day when it, they said three o'clock, it was just going to be terrible. And it was, it was terrible, like I said, to the north and south of us. But that still small voice inside of me was saying, just go about your day because it was prep day. We, I had to do all the cooking for Sabbath um, and we had to run errands and get everything done before sunset. And, and he just kept telling me, just do what you normally do. Just go about your day. And I was nervous inside, but I listened to what he said. And we didn't change our plans. We just went out. And so we're out driving around right when they, they, it was hitting. And they said the tornadoes had been on the ground for 45 minutes in this uh, Indiana town called Henryville, uh, just above us, and devastated the town. Our, our prayers need to go out to those poor people. And, and to the south of us, there's... I, um, I can't think of the names of the towns, but just so much devastation. I forgot how many lives were lost, 23, I don't know, 28, I don't know. It was just, it was just awful. But in, while in the area where we were, while we were doing our errands and going about our business, as he told me to, all we saw were the rolling clouds overhead. We kept looking up, and there was these rolling clouds and that's all we got not even any wind we got a little wow. rain and then finally the, the the rain did come through but it was it was just it wasn't even anything serious rain we didn't get any flooding it was just a, a mild little storm I, I just could not believe the miracle that he did and so we're, we're praising you and at the same time sad over the loss of mm. property and life so that's what's wow. been going on here. That's amazing. He really looks after us, doesn't he? He certainly does. It, he's, I feel like cradled, like I'm just cradled in his hand. He's, it's such yes. a beautiful protection. And tonight, mm. oh, Lou wanted me to remind you that tonight they, they do that daylight savings time again, starting tonight. Oh. Uh, I, I, you know, I actually like the daylight savings time. I just don't like it when the winter comes and they 
take a, take that hour away and our our day gets shortened because we're all scrambling to get ready for Shabbat. I wish yeah. I wish we could keep the extra hour all year round. <laughs> yeah. But that's good to know that it's changing for you guys now. Yeah. But I am not 100% sure if it is for us. Um I thought we'd talk about Passover today because that's coming up. So you said you had the dates for Passover. I should have. I brought my information with me. We have great. Um, we have uh, we have two things that and I, I want to let everybody know that this is a sheet. Can you see this sheet okay? I, I don't know if the yeah. camera can see it or not. Um, this sheet is um, what we have available online at Tor Institute. I think I'm affecting the lighting. Uh, if you if you just go to Tor Institute and you look for the free downloads, uh, you the very top one is the seven festival Sabbaths, and. That is the dates that we're we're giving you for the this this whole year for all the feast days. But for so that's the 2012 dates. Yes, yes, and you. Oh, wonderful! You can get that. You also, if you get a calendar from us, you also get one of these sheets with the calendar. But you don't need to buy a calendar from us to get the sheets. The, the, um, and we, we're going to be getting the new calendar. The, right now, the calendars that we have are good until September, but in another, I'd say in another month, we'll have the next year's. So if you do get a calendar from us later on this year, you'll get what are, as long as we have this year's and the, the next year. I don't. I'm I'm just trying to. But the Pesach, um, what happens is. Looking at the calendar, on the fourth Roman month, in the evening of the 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 fifth of the Roman month, which is actually happens to be the fifth day of the week, and it's the fifth day of the Roman month, but but in reality it's the thirteenth day of a big. Okay, maybe I should read this first. I'm I'm getting a little ahead of myself. See, we have in Abib the month of Abib, which neither calendar nobody ever uses that term anymore. But the Abib just means ripe grain harvest, and the first moon of the year at sunset is on the third month, the twenty third of the month. So we we've, we've got the um, the new moon is coming up next week in the evening of the 23rd, and then you count, and then that's the first month of the year, according to Yehuda's word. It's not a day of rest, it's just the first day of the first moon in the spring of the new year, and it's past the equinox, and it's not in winter. And then we have the memorial of Yehusha's death, back to what I was saying, so on the 13th, evening of the 13th, which come, which is the fifth day of the week, the fifth day of the Roman month, in the evening, we have a memorial of Yahushua's death. And that is in the evening. And then the, ne the following day, it's the, the 14th day of Abib, it's in the sixth day of the week, the sixth day of the month, in the evening, between the evenings, it's 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 kind of a nebulous area where it's not it's not quite it's right at sunset, but it's not quite the next day yet. It's it's a very short period of time. That's when you observe Pesach or Passover, and the Passover. The Passover is supposed to be eaten in the evening. I better go tell somebody that happened. Hold on. Yep, yeah, sure. Well, I'll just keep on going. Um, the um, I'm sorry, that distracted me. <laughs> I hope you... It's okay. I've had Aaliyah screaming here in the background. That's all I could hear. And then the phone rang, and now Mark seems to be running the bar, so it seems to be the day of distractions. Well, now, not, I don't hear any of that. I don't know if that's... Don't you? <laughs> no. Oh, that's good. 
because I could just hear her screaming like she's fallen over or something. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what's happened? <laughs> and then that happened there, and I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> It's all happening. Okay. It's because we're getting the truth out here. Okay. Yeah. So so then we, we're going to observe Pesach. I tell you what, let me read to you the um, what it says in Leviticus. Leviticus 22. No, I'm sorry. Leviticus 23. Let me aim this way. And... Um, if we skip down to the fifth verse, in the first new moon, on the 14th day of the new moon, between the evenings is the Pesach to Yahuwah. And on the 15th day of this new moon is the festival of Matzah. So we're going to have Pesach, and then immediately after that begins the 15th day of the new moon. And that is the first day of unleavened bread. Seven days you will eat unleavened bread. On the first day you have a set apart gathering. You do no serve our work. So the first day of Pesach, which is on the 15th of Abib, you're going to have a gathering. It's a feast day. It's a rest day. You cook a big meal. You get together. And you shall bring an offering. Well, that the offering part is done away with. On the seventh day is a set-apart giving gathering. You do no serve our world. So the first day and the seventh day is a Sabbath. In between, you continue to not eat uh, leavening, but it's those aren't day you know, set-apart days. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and you shall say to them, When you come into the land which I give you, and you shall reap its harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest okay that then that goes on talking about the wave sheaf offering and that is to be done on the morrow after the sabbath so you you have your last day of Pesach which is a day off then you have your weekly sabbath after that and the day after that sabbath is when they do the wave sheaf and that's when they start counting the 50 days till Shavuot, but that's another feast day. We're today we're going to stick with Passover today. Okay, now, now that was the dates. Was there anything else that you want? Well, just for everyone watching, tell us what we do when we do it. Okay. Especially as well, I guess, what a, what the woman does, because there's a lot of preparing and things in this, you know, the meal and everything, so. The, the, I hope you've got a lot of time. <laughs> there's a lot of preparation, really. What, what I start doing, I have to plan like a month. I'm already planning right now. Um, of course, I, I don't, we don't eat that much with wheat that has yeast in it. You know, your bread, anything that has yeast in it. I start making sure that I, you know, don't have any extra around. I only buy what I know I'll use up between now and the first day of Pesach. And I, we don't keep any kind of live yeast in our house anyway, but mm -hmm. if I had any anything with yeast in it, I would be getting rid of that. And the, 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 the night of the memorial Passover, uh, the mo memorial feast of Yahushua, we it's not really that's not really Passover, but we don't have anything. We just do the we just do the feast like he did. We have um, we have matzah and some wine and some bitter herbs. You know I know that's the memorial, but we that's when we do it is the evening before. Passover actually because we're having and that's when you 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 have your foot washing and um, at, at this point I make sure that there isn't anything with yeast in it now my husband has defined having yeast in it as something that where it can grow the yeast can grow because that's what yeast does it's a leavening and if it's dead if for example beer they say 
I, I don't know how you make beer, but they say there's yeast in beer. Okay. Yeah. So if you've got a can of beer in your house or a bottle of beer, um, that yeast can't be used to leaven bread. So it's, it's basically, it's dead. It's been cooked. Um, dog food. We have a lot of the dog food has yeast in it as a seasoning, I guess. And some, and a lot of vitamins has yeast in it, like yeast extract. But those things can't be used to make bread. But if you have something that can, you could hide into a loaf of bread. Yahushua used a, the, a, a sample, an example of, you know, it just takes a little lump of leavening, will leaven the whole loaf of bread. So if you have some yeast, and you, if you could hide it into a lump of bread and leaven it, then, that, then it's alive. But if it's already dead, if it can't be used to leaven bread, that's not really... Because back then, they didn't have those kinds of things. It's, mm. it's you know, they just had yeast. The only reason to have yeast was to leaven your bread with. So it was either alive or it was already cooked in your bread so either way you didn't have the live yeast and you didn't have the the bread that had been it had yeast cooked in it but nowadays people want to you know say oh you can't have that those vitamins you've got to get rid of those but i don't agree um what about bi bicarb soda or baking soda that you can be can you use um and self-raising flowers and things like that do they all under that category too. Yes, ba baking powder and bicarbonate of soda, um, baking soda, you're right. Those things do, but you see, they don't work in the same way. What those things do is they just release gas into the, the bread or the, the flour, and that's what makes it rise. It's not the same thing as, as yeast because yeast is a living organism, and you can take... Um, you can take some bread that you've mixed yeast in, you know how, and, it, and it, before you put it in the oven and it rises, well, um, you can take some, a piece of that bread. You can bake the rest of the loaf, take a piece of that bread, and, and mix it with some more flour, and that will rise also because the really? yeast grows. It, you put it, it, it lives and grows and multiplies. And that's, that's why you should use that as an example of, of letting uh, of of sin it, it it's it it represents how sin can work in our lives and so if we think about getting the living organism of yeast out of our lives for a while it, it's it's actually kind of like a fungus you know and and it can cause yeast infections you know if you've got mm -hmm. i got a terrible yeast infection i used to make my own bread and i had a i'm my hands were dry and cracked, and I was putting my hand down in this bread because I loved to make yeast. It, it was therapeutic. But somehow the, the fungus or whatever yeast is considered to be, the living organism, got inside my skin and was growing in my skin. And I had to go to um, a, a doctor and, and, and get some steroids put on it to, to, to kill it off. So yeast is, is not the same thing. I mean, that's not going to, I mean, I could put baking soda in my hand and actually probably heal the, the yeast. You know, it's not the same thing. Yeah. Yeast is the only thing that they had back then to, to make bread rise. And I don't know that they might have had baking powder and baking soda, but that's not what he was talking about. He was talking about the yeast. And the Orthodox, they will sell you at great expensive prices of, of their own little cake mixes that have baking soda and baking powder in it. Okay. When, when I discovered that, that's when I started, because we used to buy, we used to go and buy these things, you know, like, oh, well, we're going to need, and you don't need it. All you need is matzah. You don't need to have, you know, these cake mixes and stuff. But we do reframe from eating any softened bread or any, I mean, even I refrain from even fixing biscuits or anything like that, that would have just baking powder, or baking soda in it, just because we are supposed to be eating matzah. 
So we limit our, our bread eating to matzah, and we don't have any of these things. But I don't have to throw out my baking powder or my baking soda because it's not a living organism. Yeah. I just, we just don't eat it, that kind of bread. We just yeah. eat matzah. Do you make your own matzah? You know, I have made it. It's fun, uh, but I, I can't make enough to, for, to satisfy it. But it's a lot, it tastes a lot better than the stuff you buy in the boxes, yeah. But yeah, it's it's mm. it's fun to make your own matzah, and and you can get a recipe off the internet. It's really mm. easy. You just you know, ask Google how to make matzah. Okay. And so um, that that's preparing to get rid of the leaven and the yeast in the house. What's the next step? Well, like I said, then 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 we have the 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 night of the foot washing, the memorial feast, and we where we have matzah and wine, and then the the following night is Pesach, and when the children were little, we would have the matzah and the wine again, and we would take um, what well, was grape juice for them, we would take the um, parsley. The traditional bitter herb is parsley, and that's only because we don't know what bitter herbs they used back then. You know, there's many um, different kinds of bitter herbs that I'm sure you've tasted some yourself, but I don't know what he meant. No one re remembers. So the tradition is, um, is parsley dipped in horseradish. That's the tradition. Mm -hmm. But what well, we would take some of the parsley and we would dip it into the grape juice and we would go outside and we would splash it on the doorpost above and below just as um, just to show an example of how they had to do it for the first Passover. And it was mostly just something to for the children, for a symbol. That's why it's so wonderful to have all these different feast days and, and traditions and things is, is so that they'll have something to remember. And then that would be the official beginning of the unleavened bread, which you can cook on. Uh, most, most of the time on Sabbath, on regular weekly Sabbath, we don't drive a car. We don't start a fire. But on the first day of, of unleavened bread, see, the tradition, the Jewish tradition is to call the seven days of Passover, Pesach, seven days. But it's not. You have Passover and then immediately begins the first day of unleavened bread, which that is the, um, and that is the Sabbath. But it's a feast day, so we can, you know, if you have friends over, they can go home, <laughs> or, or if, if you want to cook a meal, you can cook on that day. In fact, that's what that's what we do. We just cook, and we have, um, you know, celebrations, and have friends over, and um, then, then for the, let's see, that would be the first day of Pesach, then on the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth day, we, if, if, one of those days is probably going to be a Sabbath, but if not, we we just go to work and go about our normal day, except we always make sure we eat some matzah every day because that's commanded to eat some matzah. No requirement of how much, but just a bite. And then on the seventh day, we have another Sabbath and another feast day where we usually get together with other people Usually we stick to just our family because with I have two grown boys and, and and three grandchildren and you know he says wherever two or more are gathered together he is with them so it only takes you know just us it doesn't require you know a a, a whole big gathering sometimes we do because there are a few people here in Louisville that sometimes they like to get together but. Not very often, you know. They've all got their own family that they want to get together with. Sorry, can you excuse me just a second? Yes, ma'am. Sorry, won't be a moment.
sorry. I could hear Aaliyah in the bath by herself and Mike has gone somewhere and uh, she was getting upset and oh. <laughs> I was panicking. <laughs> oh my so, goodness. Hi, <laughs> Say hello. Hi sister. Yeah? See sister Phyllis. Hello. She says she she'd, really really she'd rather look at you. Say hi. Let her go up. Hello? 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 What is that around her neck? A necklace? Um, it's a, a necklace. So I'll just pop the earphone back in. It's a um, necklace. Necklace. It's uh, amber beads. It's supposed to help them with teething symptoms and, and things like to stop them from drooling as much and having as much pain and things apparently so okay see saying hi all right mike's just taken her <laughs> bye bubby sorry about that okay i get a bit panicked <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we've gone through that. The preparation for the lamb. What's what's that? The preparation do? for what? The lamb for the for the Passover lamb. Is there anything special that we need to do for the lamb? Um, well, there's no requirement for lamb. Uh, that's a misconception. A lot of people think that oh, okay. they have to have lamb, or that there are even a small number of people that think they have to slaughter their lamb but you see we're not we're commanded not to slaughter a lamb it is it, this very distinctly says uh that you can't slaughter lamb just wherever you want to it has if you're going to slaughter lamb it has to be in 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 the um land itself you know there's only a certain place where you can do it you can't just do it anywhere and the that would be a, a direct insult and fly in the face of Yahusha's sacrifice for us because he's the only lamb that needs to be slaughtered. He was the Passover lamb. Uh, there, there's a a story, and and I I think everybody needs to back to Tor Zone again. But Lou wanted me to mention that you can order this DVD called The Lamb Legacy. And that's what threw me off when you said the lamb. I thought, how does she know <laughs> he wanted people? Uh, he, he knew you were going to ask about that. <laughs> he, he, but the lamb legacy, just go to torazone.net. But I think Mark also has it on the YouTube videos. Now, I don't know if that's one that he's taken off. I know that they're revamping a lot of the... Yeah. Is that one off? Okay. Well, if you can't mm -hmm. find it there, and if you can't wait mm -hmm. until he redoes it and puts it back up, we have it available and still available as a DVD, and you can just order it from torazone.net. But it explains about his sacrifice and, and what he represented, because there was two lambs always was was sacrificed, and the the one lamb... Had, was released with a red net, a tie around his neck. Uh, see, you need to watch the video, not listen to me. One was released and it had red around his neck. The other one was slaughtered. It had white around his neck. And then when the one that had the red around his neck would come back, the, the, the neckerchief would be white. And that's a miracle that happened every day ex until the day Yahushua was slaughtered. And because you see he was he was killed on um the fourteenth just before see the and when I say fourteenth I'm talking about of the of of a bee. And so yeah, he yeah. was killed on the fourteenth. And that evening at sunset was to begin the first day of unleavened bread. The the feast day. That's why they took him down off the, the stake and had him buried because they didn't want anybody up on still on the stake they had to get everybody down and so they went through and they had to break the legs of everybody that wasn't still dead but he was already dead 
so they didn't have to break his legs and that's why he, he was the perfect lamb with no broken bones so if if you go and slaughter a lamb you're really bringing to naught his sacrifice you know so let, yeah, let's yeah. not do that but if you want to have lamb uh, sometimes and quite often I go and and buy some lamb uh, from the there's a Whole Foods and there's also Kroger they both have lamb and I'll get some lamb and we'll grill grill some on the grill and it's very very good I love it but it's very expensive so it's it's a it's something we save as a tree for Pesach and um, but yeah, that's that. There's no preparation required. You just go and cook it like you would any other meal. Okay. With the foot washing, I know we had some confusion last year over who was supposed to wash whose feet. So could you go into a little bit more detail, telling us about what the process is for the foot washing? Well, you know the, I, there's no criteria. Uh, I think what it's. It's a matter of being humbled. When Yahushua was washing the feet of the servants, he was saying he that, you know, he who would be, I might be getting this mixed up, but he said he who would be the master needs to be the servant. You know, if you want to be in, in the master of all, you have to be the servant of all. And um, so it's... I guess in, if there's a family or if there's a gathering, it would be whoever considers themselves the head of the household. You know, Mark needs to get down there on his knees and wash your feet, this Pesach. And you, you probably, you know, and he needs to wash everybody's feet to show that as the head of the household, he is also your servant. He's serving you by leading you. And so Lou washed our feet, and Yahushua washed the feet of his of his disciples. His, you know, he became the servant. Okay, wonderful. Is there anything more you can tell us that we may be missing? That um, particularly, like a like the woman and the. Obviously, in this show, the wife and the woman's role and Passover or any of the feast, what is the woman's role to do and be and say? You know, that depends upon who who takes care of the food. You know, there are some households out there where the um, the men take care of the food, you know, or equally share. So I don't think in pa Passover or Unleavened Bread, it's a woman's role or not a woman's role because whoever is the, in charge of t taking care of the food. These days, the, the roles, the man-woman roles have changed so much. And um, I, know in my, I, I know of households where it would be the man that who's responsible for going to the grocery and bringing the food home, and he would be the one responsible. But the... the it's all about the food. It's all about the bread. That's all it's really about is just the bread. There's no yeah. other thing. You know, the, 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 the Jewish tradition, and there's a lot of people who do these Haggadahs, I think I said that right, where they sit down on Pesach and they read these words. And, and I think in Leviticus they even talk about, you know, you should, your children should ask these four questions. Well, they've turned that into a long, drawn-out, ordeal when in reality Yahushua commanded us to 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 do it quickly if, if I can find this very quick I'm going to I, I don't want to take up a lot of time with it but he said um, he says and this and this is how you should eat it your loins gird it your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand and you shall eat it in haste it is Pesach so when we when we were um, when we have Pesach, Lou always has his keys, his car keys in his pocket to represent his staff because your staff was your walking. You know that's a lot of people think 
take where where it says in a, a lot of translations, take up your cross and follow me. That's a mistranslation. It's take up your staff and follow me. And so your staff is what you went walking for, for on a journey. It you know so if so when we would eat pasak, Lou would always get his keys and put them in his pocket because that's what we would do if we were going to go leave in haste. And we always made yeah. sure we had our shoes on. You know, my boys run around barefoot all the time, but they didn't for Pesach. They had to have their shoes on. So um, that, no, no woman's role, no Haggadah. We asked the questions when our children were young. We had them ask the questions like, why is this night different from other nights? The, they're in here. The questions are in here. I don't remember what they are. Uh, I should after all these years, but I don't remember them. But no, there's, I don't think that there's really anything that a woman needs to do, but the cook of the house needs to make sure that there's no leavening, that there's plenty of matzah to last. Of course, you can go out and buy some more if you run out, but you're not likely to find it, so you might have to make it yourself. Um, is there a night that you have to stay up late and keeping watch, is it? Good question. Yes. The night that you stay up late is the, um, and I'm not real sure about what night that is. We, we kind of change. Um, the, the evening of Pesach, see, because the, the night that Yehusha um, was, was having his dinner, uh, you know, they, he was just having a meal with them, um, was the night that they were they must have been keeping a vigil that night because the fires people were outside you know when they came and arrested him and took him in and they were outside and and people were walking up to uh peter saying you were with him well, that's because everybody was outside keeping a vigil and so that is the night that i would say that you need to keep a vigil and of course it's kind of tough keeping a vigil that night because the next day is just a working day and it's the next night mm -hmm. that is unleavened bread so you know you got to go to work the next day after you've kept a vigil sometimes we um we've observed that vigil um the night before unleavened bread but it is in scripture that you should keep a vigil and and when when he was praying when he had the disciples out with him and he said can I, can you not keep watch with me this one night so we we suspect that that was the night that you were supposed to keep the vigil um and but i'm not real sure but yes maybe you need to do it both nights to make sure i don't know but we sh we're we're watchmen and that's what watchmen are supposed to do <laughs> And how late should someone should be staying? How late should someone stay up for that vigil? Is it talking about staying up all night? I, I think when I when I read it, when I read the scriptures, that's what I hear. But who can do that? I mean, even yeah. the disciples with Yahusha right there with him could not do it. Um, my my husband and the boys they would um they would stay up you know when they were younger they would stay up all night but then yeah. as as Lou got yeah. older <laughs> he would stay until the we are's you know so i don't know i <sighs> is there anything in particular we're supposed to be doing during the vigil well Staying awake, I, I don't know, praying, reading scripture. Um, I, I would just, I couldn't do it. I, I usually ended up falling asleep. I wasn't any better than the apostles with Yahusha. I, I can't stay up all night. Uh, sometimes they would, we would watch movies, teaching videos, like, you know, like now it would be tour talk, something like that. Or we would have yeah. a, we would have yeah. different teaching videos. That kind of was easy to sleep to. <laughs> but um, no, 
there there's not nothing in particular that you need to do other than just be be acknowledging the fact that you should be keeping a vigil. Yeah. Wonderful. I don't I've, I don't think there's anything else that I can think of that um you haven't answered today about Passover. Is there anything that you wanted to add about it? No. I can't think of anything that I think we covered all the the highlights the the um the timing is what's going to be very difficult. It's 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 tricky and and, and until today this might be funny seem funny to you but every year I've always been confused but today I after I sat down knowing that I was going to have this talk with you I finally got a clear understanding you know um, of what was happening and like I said it, it I highly recommend that video lamb legacy mm -hmm. um, because it, it will put in perspective what Yahushua was doing and what the, why the two lambs why he he represents two lambs you know for his death and that's what Pesach is all about and a lot of people um, I don't want to take up too much time, but I, there's a lot of confusing about confusion about when the first month starts, and there's nothing in Scripture that says that anything about barley growing. It calls the first month of a bee, which means barley, but that's just the name of the month because the barley is going to be growing in that month. But what you what you really wait for is until the equinox is over. When the equinox comes and goes, then the first new moon comes, and then that represents the first month of the year. Last year, the new moon came just a day before the equinox, but that's okay because it's it was within it, the, the phases of the moon. It's not like a cut and dry thing. This moon... Is the phases of the moon kind of spanned about three oh, over three days? So we that's why you can sometimes say, well, you're off a day from what the naval observatory says is the new moon, yeah. and that's because it spans a period of time. We follow our older brother because they've been doing it long time. They've never mm -hmm. skipped a beat. They've always kept it. And Yahushua never argued with them about when they were doing it or how they were doing it. And so we stay and follow them when, whenever we're in doubt. We just look at okay. the older brother. Yeah. Wonderful. So we've got the, um, the sheet that's available from TorahZone.net. has got the fe feast dates for the whole year for um, all the feasts. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everyone can download that, um, and and then they'll know what's going on for the rest of the year, which would be great, right? Because there are days, there are Sabbaths throughout the year we have to take off. I know we have to plan them in advance in the in the business and everything. So it's great to have that in advance to plan for it. And and when we get our new calendars in, Lou and I will sit down and we'll make a, another sheet for the following year. So we always have a sheet to go along with whatever year the calendar is. All right, fantastic. And then we've got the Lamb Legacy, which has more information about Passover, and that is available from TorahZone.net as well. Yes, ma'am. Is that correct? Okay. <laughs> All right, great. So there's two, there's two things that people can download to get and, and or purchase to get more information about it. Is there anything you wanted to add about anything else officially on the show? No, I'm. I think we've about covered everything. Um, yeah. I hope I haven't left anything out. I'm really sorry if I have, but I I did a lot of praying about this today and studying and and talking to Lou and I think I think we we covered everything. Lou, Lou also said another thing you can do is look at the last four chapters of Matthew. Okay. And you should study that also. Uh, but wonderful. I, but that I think that covers it for Passover for us. Great. 
Well, that's very exciting. So that's coming up very soon. So we can start getting ready. And I know what you were saying about the buying, the, um, making sure you don't buy anything with yeast in it from now on. Because I remember one year I used to have bread rolls and bread in the freezer. Yeah. Stuff <laughs> and then we got to one year and it was time to clear out. And I went, oh, my goodness, we didn't eat all this. Look at it all. And we had to throw out so much stuff. And I said, from now on, every year, I'm going to make sure I stop buying it, you know, a month or two beforehand so that it doesn't happen to us again. Well, so, yes. this conversation is actually helping me because I, I, I'm usually so busy, I don't think about it until it's right upon me. And I go, oh, I forgot again. And also, yeah. you have to get your, if you're going to buy matzo, you have to buy that early, too, because they run out. You know, if you, yeah. wait, you can't wait until the day before. Wow. I'm not sure how easy it would be for us to get matzo here in the shops because um, there's not a big Jewish community around um, down here. So, do you, do you make your matzo? I haven't before, but I was just thinking then when you were saying it that I might Google a recipe afterwards and and have a look. So, you know, the easiest way. Um, I, I, this is my my boys. Their favorite thing that I ever did is I would take some flour and I would make. I would add enough water to it to, until it looked like pancakes. I wouldn't put, you don't have to use baking soda or baking powder. I would just add enough salt, a little salt, and enough water until it looked like a pancake mix and pour it into to a pan and make a big, big flat pancake, really, and it would just be flat and flip it over and cook it on both sides. And um, they love that. They would just sit there and eat it like pancakes. Yeah. So that was that was quick and easy. Now that's not crispy like matzo crackers are. You have to actually, I guess you could then take it and throw it in the. I guess you could do that and throw it in the oven and, and then make yeah. them crispy if you wanted to. But um, I I've done it. I've done the oven stuff too. And uh, yeah. So. Okay. I will have a go at that this year. Okay. I wasn't aware that you was a that we were told to eat matzo every day. For Passover, that was something new. I didn't realize that was part of it, so that's interesting. That was wonderful. Okay, good. I'm glad we shared that. <laughs> yes, thank you very much for all the information you've given us today. It's been wonderful. It's very exciting coming up to the feast. Yes, it is. Thank you. I, I, um, I always, it's stressful, but it's also fun because you get you get two days off. Yeah, yes. It's the one day that we, you, you said, is there anything for the woman or the cook of the family? It, it is a fun day that you can, if you enjoy cooking, you can have the day off and just concentrate on your cooking instead of like preparing for Sabbath. You're, you, you don't have to cook it the day before, you can cook it the day of. So that's, that's, yeah. that's fun. Oh, wonderful. Well, thank you very much, sister. It's great. Well, it was nice talking to you. I, I uh, always look forward to getting to see you. Yes, yeah. I think, um, God, I haven't... It seems like it's been a lot longer than a fortnight this time. I was trying to think of what it was that had happened between now and then that... Um, distracted me. That's all right. It's been quite a day of distractions today. <laughs> yes, it has. Well, sorry about that. Yehul will get the word out that he wants out, so it'll be okay. Yeah. I'm. I feel like I kind of stumbled around a lot today too, but Yehul will no, make it no, all make good. sense. I thought it was great. It was good and a nice, a new understanding, fresh understanding for me. So that's good. And it was interesting. You were saying that the having the lamb was not um, necessary and all that. So, uh, whereas we always thought that was the main thing of Passover, so to know that's not is interesting, so that's great. Well, thank you very much. Well, you're welcome. Have a good day. And, um, yeah, it, it will um, work out something to talk about next fortnight, a fortnight, so. Okay, all right, well, let me know. If you have if you have any ideas or whatever. Do yeah. I have any ideas? No. All right, well, have a good, enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Shalom. I'll see you. Shalom. He is good, he is good, he is good. Yahusha is good. Great is his loving kindness forever. Yahusha is good. He is good, he is good, he is good. Yahusha is good.
greatest is love and kindness forever.